from the from the poverty stricken people they have created. Now, for a moment, I want to talk about the Hillary Clinton and what's going on in Haiti, which the news media isn't mentioning at all. Now, the Clinton Foundation was largely set up to take care of the Haitian people after this earthquake. They've raised purportedly some billions of dollars. And the Haitian people absolutely hate the Clintons because they've barely received a penny of that. I think they got a new tree planted in Haiti for Earth Day. You know, that's what the Clintons have given back out of that. They bought Chelsea Clinton, a $10 million uh, condominium in, uh, in Manhattan, uh, somewhere in that area there in New York. And uh, so that's how they're spending the money. That's how they see fit to spend this money. And of course, all this is is legal through loopholes and and up and up. But they blame, they're going to get on Donald Trump's case because he is avoiding tax wherever it's legally able to be done. And you know, what person in their right mind isn't going to avoid taxes if it's legal? It's not doesn't fall under the category of tax evasion because that, as we all know, is illegal. So the hypocrisy is legendary here. Uh, and it's been proven that this guy, Saul Alinsky, one of uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, mentors, you know, one of her idols that she looks up to, says this is the playbook. This is how you do it. You know, this is how you trick people under this pretense of socialism or whatever you want to call it. That they say, what all the crimes you're committing, you blame on your opponent. And anybody that challenges you, 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 you charge them with the same crimes you're committing. And that's exactly what's taking place here. Now we've got all these women out there that are saying, Donald Trump all of a sudden is a sex offender, okay? They come out of nowhere. Donald Trump says he doesn't even know these people. Okay, never met most of them. Okay, so all these people, well, you know what, if you get sued, whoever's hiring these women to do this, they are evidently offering them protection. They're probably being bribed with sums of money. I mean, let your imagination loose and figure out how this works. But remember, this is very recent. These women were utterly silent up until now. And then they come out and say, yes, Donald Trump hurt my feelings. He, he called me Ms. Piggy. And, uh, and, and, you know, he said this about my looks and that about my looks. And, and he used the P word. And, you know, I got into this whole thing last week about the, you know, the, the words and the ridiculous nature of it. Because probably nobody's ever heard of the B word in America. But I explained that in the last video. The B word refers to the word bloody. And if you go to England and you use that word haphazardly, you're going to offend people because it's equivalent to the F word here. And the F word in England uh, might refer to a cigarette. People say, scratch your head. Well, what's that all about? Well, in England, I remember back in the 60s, living there as a child, and that's what they referred to a cigarette as. It was called a fag, okay, an F word. So, but if you use the word fag haphazardly in America, you're going to offend somebody of the homosexual persuasion. So you see how stupid this thing is and how it offends our very tradition of free speech in America, our law, our constitutional rights of free speech. We shouldn't worry about somebody being a racist and using the N-word, okay, because then we can identify them and say, look, you, my friend, are a racist, and then we can peg them. And we can say without any equivocation, that that person is a racist. They're identified. They outed themselves, essentially, okay? So it's the same thing if they use the J word in the wrong way. You know, the Jew. A Jew is not a bad word. I mean, we're all Jews, aren't we? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's basically what all humanity is. And we all come from Africa, so we're all African American. Uh, all African American. I mean, if you look at my own ancestral roots, I mean, I've got, I've got a, a Native American Indian which is from the French Can Canadian region. If you look up a Mississauga tribe, uh, you'll find the Port Credit. You know, look up Port Credit, and you'll find Mississauga all up and down there. And so that's I got that in me from my dad's side, and I've got plenty of Irish. His mother was an immigrant from Ireland, and now my mother was fully Dalmatian, both on both her parents' side. So, uh, you know, right away I got that, and the, the French got in there somehow, the French-Canadian, because actually the name Credit is kind of a French name anyhow, and of course we know the French had a huge influence up in Canada. 
My ancestral name was Palaquin, but for whatever reason they chucked that name. I guess it wasn't trendy enough. Uh, but, uh, you know, now my children. Okay, so my children's mother is uh, Persian, uh, which is actually, you know, Iranian, I guess. But uh, her dad always said, no, we're not Iranian, it's Persian. So, you know, we've got to correct that. They're Persian, and, uh, and uh, so he was pure Persian. And so they got, uh, they're on, uh, on my, uh, my, my mother-in-law's side, she was Irish and Scotch. So now we've got, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna preface everybody's, uh, you know, when we call somebody a race, we're gonna say, you know, you're not African American because you're black. I mean, as we all know, African, I mean, black people are all over the world. So what are we gonna call me now? Are we gonna call me a, a Dalmatian American Indian, um, Irish, French Canadian? dude i mean american i mean it's stupid and how about my children now what you know what i mean you talk about heights 57 the melting pot you know i mean what are we gonna do I, I, you know, see how stupid this whole thing gets with the words and the language it's just stupid so there's all these words out there and then the p word well right away we think of p you know uh, you know the, the female genitalia i mean you know but what about the cat the kitty cat, and then what about the men, you know? Oh, that guy, you know, he's a P word. He, you know, what do they mean? He, he's a prick? And how about the D word? I mean, how many guys get called, a, you know, a dick? You know, a dick. That was my dad's name. His name was Richard. He liked to be called Dick or Dicky. You know, so it, it, it's so silly. It's just beyond words right now. And these words have another meaning. I mean, a guy, he used to be called a sissy, right, if he was acting effeminate. But all my life growing up, if a guy was acting that way, he was called a pussy. And that's, that's still in for, you know, that guy. So it's just stupid, stupid, stupid. And I feel stupid talking about it, But all this nonsense over vulgarities and, you know, what word you want to call the genitalia. And, you know, it's got a, a million different names. I know my wife had her own name for the female organs. And I don't need to repeat these names. I feel foolish just talking about this subject. I really do, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. But I think that free speech, if we start, you know, nitpicking and saying, oh, well, you know what, you said this word, and that's offensive, and, you know, oh, I'm going to look down on you, and, and I'm going to think this about you and that about you, it's just stupid. And we've all got to get it together and say, look, the most important thing is that people feel free to use whatever words, whatever terms they want, and if you don't like it, too bad. If you're an employer, you could always fire somebody. You could say, well, you offended me and I'm your boss, so you're out of here. But anybody else, you, we can't have rules and laws and say, you know what, I mean, this guy, he's a racist and you can't, that's hateful to be a racist and all this. You know what, I mean, maybe somebody's got a good reason. Maybe they were picked on by this race or that race. I mean, God, it's just so stupid that we've got to get it together and say, let's see things through God Almighty's eyes. Let's try to be as good a parent, if you're a parent, as you can be. I mean, even step-parents are parents. you got foster parents. Anybody can act like a parent. Big brothers and big sisters. You know, biological parents. It's all pretty much the same. But let's be good parents to one another, to, to the younger generation. You know, we can parent the younger people. And we can be good parents. And who do we look to for advice? Let's look to God. What is God's will for us? Well, what is a normal parent's will for their children? They want the very best for their children. They want their whole lives to be like a metaphorical wet dream. You know, uh, uh, and I mean that, you know, loosely because in every respect, you want them to enjoy their life, to be filled with joy and, and contentment and happiness and safety and security and prosperity, and you want them free. So isn't it fair to assume that God Almighty wants those same things for his children? To me, it's 100% fair that we've just got to just get it. And when we get it, we'll understand that things are a lot different from the way that we're being steered by the rulers of this world. These are the ones, if you read your Bible, I believe if you read in the book of Ephesians, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Though there are so many of these perilous, wicked rulers, these black hats in high places that are manipulating humanity, psychologically with propaganda and deceit, outright lies and violence if they don't get their way. If that doesn't work, they're willing to do anything. 
You know, 9-11, of course an inside job. You get a few euphemistically called rascals in there in these high places, like one of Bush's uh, uh, brothers was a, is in charge of security at the, uh, at the uh, Twin Towers, okay? Of course these people will do that. They'll do anything to get their way. But we're in a lot of trouble when these people are in control, and they are to a large degree in control. But we've got to be aware and awake to what their agenda is and what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to turn us against each other. And back to that Bible passage. But remember, this is not against flesh and blood. This battle that all humanity has is not with one another. That's what they want you to think. But it's against the principalities. It's against the powers. It's against these people, these black hats in high places, though the Bible uses different terms in the book of Ephesians. But it's that same thing. That's who we wrestle against. These are the evildoers. These are the Satanists. These are the ones that have avowed hatred for God, for good, for anything that's right and holy and true. And just because you talk about holiness and this, and this doesn't make you religious. We're talking about right and wrong, good and bad. You know, truth from lies. That's all. It, it just means you're a cosmic creature. Human beings are very exceptional. We have the prerogative to rule the earth. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to subdue it. We have to have control. We, you know, we want to spay and neuter our pets at times because we can't have them overpopulate and see the sad stories out there like in Russia where they're, you know, the animals are, are running free. And speaking of Russia, you know, if Hillary does steal this election you know, from Donald Trump, the way that she stole it from Bernie Sanders, I might just defect. And I'm not kidding out there. I don't care anymore what people think or say. I really don't. Because if you look at Putin's popularity in Russia, okay, it's a hell of a lot higher than any president we've had from, say, JFK, okay? So, yeah, I would say, you know what, maybe I'm going to Russia, okay? Because at least I think that they got the media is a lot more honest over there. And that's how these people, these black hats, are running roughshod over us. They're largely using the mainstream media, okay? These people are liars. They're scared, you know, so we've got to give them a break. They're, they need their job, okay? Do you understand the degree of fear these people that are ruling over us have over people through the monetary system, through financial insecurity? People need their job, man. You don't pay your mortgage. You don't pay your rent. You don't pay your property taxes, man. You're homeless. That's reality in America, and it should not be that way. And then we got laws out there like this quasi law. Look it up. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, I've talked about this before. I learned about it in real estate school. But uh, where you've, you can go and take property, uh, and you um, and it's called uh, uh, adverse possession. Look up the term adverse possession. Okay, so. If you've got the means, and I'm talking money, everything's about money. The power of this world is all in the money. If you've got the money, and you can hire a real estate attorney, and he can tell you exactly how you can go out and legally, okay, quasi-laws, you can steal property. Matter of fact. Okay, but the average Joe, do you think the average homeless guy is allowed that privilege? That exclusive privilege to somebody with money? No. This ought not be the case. It's like Satan is taking over. So if you're willing to be underhanded and you're moneyed, you can go out there and steal property without paying anybody anything, okay? And you, there's nothing anybody can do to stop you. Private property, public property, whatever, okay? You go find out the law for yourself. If you want to learn more, you've got to hire a real estate attorney. But that should not be the case. Nevertheless, it is the case. We all know. And look at Bill Clinton. For decades and decades now, Bill Clinton has been accused of being a rapist. Okay? He has forced, that's what rape means. It means you forced yourself on women. I don't know what happened with Monica Lewinsky, but we all know about the blue dress and the cigars and you know, all this stuff for how many years did America get dragged through the mud? This is all we've got to talk about while well, the nation's falling apart, okay, under Bill Clinton? 
you know, and don't get me started on Baby Bush, okay, because these, this was a seamless transition as far as I'm concerned. These people are walking in lockstep. In fact, they call each other brothers, and, you know, the whole family is connected at the hip. Okay, they're all, it makes me sick to my stomach. Okay, but look at the Paula Jones incident. Bill Clinton settled a case for over $800,000. Tell me, what man in America would settle a sexual harassment case with a woman if he wasn't guilty for $800,000? Not one, except Bill Clinton. We're supposed to believe he's not a rapist, but it was just hush money. Oh, please, don't talk about this. You're slandering me, and, and I, you know, I, uh, I don't have time for this, and you're messing up my, my image here. Okay, no. This 